Um, so let's get started. This is episode one. Welcome to I Hit Send Sunday with Steve, a homie just like you. This is, this is a tough question. This is a tough question. Do you stay in the closet because you know your parents are gonna help out with college? There is no way to conquer ignorance. That's the problem. You know, ignorance is always the battle, but there's always gonna be ignorant people. The important thing is to stay strong, you know? Find the people that do support you. I know, I know. Everyone should come out, but it's a special circumstance. Hey, it's Stephen Boyle. This is I Hit Send Sunday, week seven. Oh my God, week seven. Seven is a magical number. I don't know if you guys knew that, uh, but yeah, it's a magical number. Weird things happen on episode seven. Everyone has voted for the one video format. Everyone in the comments, and there was not one person who was like, I'd like the episodic version. Whew, I think I remember how to do this. Hey, I'm Steve Boyle. That's Oliver. That's Speedy. This is a poster of a man shirtless holding up a sloth that I quite enjoy. My name is Steve Boyle. I, uh, two years ago, set out to make a series called I Hit Send Sunday, and that was as a result of Many people emailing me after seeing my poems and telling me about their concerns and their worries with being uh, gay or LGBTQA plus, or you know, just not feeling comfortable in their own skin. And that uh, seemed to be a sign uh, to me that I could make a difference, make somebody more comfortable in their skin, if only for five minutes at a time. And that is all I wanted to do. Why haven't I kept up with it? Uh, why were there so many pauses in between? Why did I say I was back like three different times? Because I really thought I was ready to come back. I wanted this show to be um, something selfless. And at a certain point, I think uh, numbers and subscribers and popularity started to get into my head. And I worried about the series not being uh, a meal ticket or something. And it, it robbed what I liked about it from me. And I let it happen. And so I'm sorry for people who are true fans of the show for, for uh, leaving you hanging. I just wanted to do this for the right reasons and I wasn't willing to come back until I was doing it for the right reasons. Um, today, I think I'm doing it for the right reason. Thank you for having me back. Thank you for putting me on your phone, tablet, computer, possibly smart TV. Um, it's good to be here again. It's good to be here with you. Um, and thank you for letting me back. Today is a very special episode of I Hit Send Sunday. It is called I Hit Send Sunday Revisited. Um, this was a suggestion I got in my email uh, not too long ago. Somebody said, follow up, follow up with these people, find out if how they're doing. It's been two years and yeah, that was a great idea. So uh, what did I do? I wrote emails to some of my favorite um, questions, um, to questions I thought uh, weren't specific to that person that, that a lot of people could relate to and, and completely understand where that person was coming from. So, this is I Hit Send Sunday, revisited with Oliver, Speedy, and Steve, and this pretty erotic poster over here. Um, I want to get started. Thank you for letting me get that off my chest. First, huge disclaimer, I do not take any credit for where these people are today. I am not going to bullshit you and tell you that it had anything to do with me. Um, I do this because I think everyone just needs to hear something reassuring every once in a while. Um, ultimately, it was up to them to change their lives and uh, set the course for how they wanted to live. So, um, please, if you must applaud, applaud these people. Um, I played a very small role, but I was very interested to find out uh, how they've been since. If you really want to get a sense of where they were and what I said, please take the time to go back and maybe watch the episode. I will tell you exactly what episode this uh, occurred in. So, let's get into it. We're going all the way back to week one, episode one, but the very first email I was written is from a guy named Jonathan at JMU. Um, and Jonathan had some concerns about college. I was hoping you could maybe discuss college advice or experiences. I myself am a sophomore in college and recently came out, so I'd love to hear any advice you have on being openly gay in college or study tips or getting involved. I wrote him a brief email just to ask him for an update. And Jonathan wrote me, hey Steve, I'm sorry it took a while for a response. Uh, do not worry about it. Unfortunately, I've been off and on YouTube for a while, so I haven't kept up with your videos, but you bet your ass I'm gonna go back and catch up on your videos. Thank you. Um, anyways, I'm doing great. I'm going into my senior year at JMU, uh, which I'm stoked about because I am 110% done with school. The last time we messaged, I was an engineering major, but now I've switched to biology to pursue my lifelong passion in botany. I plan to become an ergonomist. Ergonomist? I hope I'm saying that right. But I don't have any jobs lined up so far. Uh, for now, uh, I plan on doing wolfing after graduation. 
which is organic farming in Hawaii. Wow, that's super cool. Uh, but who knows what the future holds? Not much else is happening, except I did just adopt a five-month-old Catahoula leopard dog named Louie. He is a ham and smart as a whip. I will attach an unsolicited pup pick right here. Um, let's see what else. Um, I'm still single, but I've got so much else going on with school, so who's got time for that? Not sure what else I'll mention, uh, so I'll stop here. Thanks for contacting me. It honestly means a lot. Jonathan, I am so glad to hear that you're doing well, man, and congratulations to making it to your senior year of JMU and finding a passion. That is crazy. You sound a lot more confident and positive about life. Thank you so much for writing me back, um, and congratulations on botany and finding a passion. That's super important. Next up was a guy named Nicholas, and Nicholas wrote me on week five, episode one. And Nicholas uh, was concerned about coming out to his college roommates, uh, which I had been through. If you've seen my coming out video, that was a huge point of uh, anxiety for me and uh, for Nicholas as well, and possibly a lot of people watching here who are heading off to college soon and don't know how to handle that stuff. This, this comes from a guy named Nicholas, and Nicholas writes, Hi Steve, my name is Nicholas. I'm 18 and have recently started college. My immediate family and all of my friends know that I am gay, but for some reason telling people about my sexuality doesn't seem to get any easier. I would say let them get to know you as you first. Let's check in with Nicholas. Hey Steve, I'm so sorry for the amount of time it's taken for me to respond. Again, sorry for the amount of time it's taken for me to make this video. I would love to be part of this little revival. Thank you so much for following up. First, I would like to say that I appreciate the fact that you responded to my question. It really helped me out a lot. Personally, I can't believe that was two years ago. As I enter my junior year of college, it's crazy to see how far I've come. Now I'm so much more comfortable when I come out to people. I remember the amount of anxiety and how scared I was entering college as a gay young adult. As far as telling my roommates that I was gay, it turned out to be far less dramatic than I thought it would be. I didn't sit them down and have a big coming out moment with them or anything like that. I would just casually mention it, and if the opportunity presented itself, they would say, oh, okay, and we would move on with our lives. There was no bad blood between me and any of my roommates I've had over the past two years because of my sexuality. Even though we weren't uh, ever extremely close friends, my sexuality was never the cause of that. As far as my college experience as a whole, I think that attending a fairly liberal school has positively affected it. My freshman year was more timid and really didn't tell people unless I was uh, sure I was comfortable around them. Sophomore year, I would definitely say that I opened up more and let people know a lot more carelessly. I believe that over the years, I decided that if someone was going to have a bad reaction to me being gay, I don't really want to surround myself with them and I definitely don't want their approval anyway. Boom. That. Yeah. Uh, it's something I can't, nor do I want to change, so I can't let people hold me back. I have to keep moving forward and yeah, haha, <laughs> that's basically where I'm at with my life. Oh man, that's such good news. That is, that's really great, man. I'm really glad that you got over the anxiety. I mean, coming out to college roommates can feel like a huge deal. You're living with these people, but I mean, here you are, two years ago, nervous about that. And I mean, just from your email, you sound like a whole different person. That's huge. Nicholas, I'm really proud of how far you've come. And uh, you should be proud of yourself as well. It's a big deal. You might remember this next email. Uh, from week four, episode three. Hi Steve, my name is Calvin. You can call me Cal, I'm gonna call you Cal. When my sisters are talking about gay subjects, my, da my dad always gets really angry and says that all gay people are sick and should be killed. Also, I'm his only son, and it's really important for Asian people to pass your last name. I just feel so alone and can't talk to anyone about it. I've never told anyone that I'm gay. But my other problem is, that I really want a relationship. We don't all deserve to die, and you don't deserve to be growing up in a household where that kind of talk is tolerated. I'm sure that's a huge cause of depression because how can you feel safe in your own house? How, how can you feel safe in your own house? That's horrible, man, I'm sorry. That, that's really shitty. His dad seemed to be pretty aggressively homophobic. So I wrote Calvin, I wanted to find out what was going on, and Calvin said, hey Steve, thanks for the email. I uh, love that you give uh, about, I love that, love that you really give about your, I think he's trying to say that I really give a shit about my viewers and fans, and I do, um, so thank you for saying that. Um, about the situation, it didn't really change that much really, uh, or actually, I still didn't tell him and my other family members, so it's still kind of a problem. Uh, but some good news is that I came, I came out to my close friends. They were all really accepting and loving, to the point that it's kind of too positive. Too positive! <laughs> 
Um, maybe it sounds a bit weird, but they all reacted so positively that it feels like my coming out to them went too well. <laughs> like in my head, it was such a big issue, but for them it was just normal. Um, like I was telling them that I like to eat chocolate or something. They didn't really care about it. Uh, that's actually really nice, but sometimes it feels just so nice that uh, all the time I was scared to come out was for nothing. I actually told five people now and they were all so accepting. I was expecting at least one to be negative about it, but no one did. Actually, I should be really happy. Did you feel the same when you came out? How are you, by the way? You're not that much on your channel anymore. Happy to hear that you're coming back with I Hit Send Sunday videos. Uh, I would really like to hear from you again, Calvin. Uh, well, Calvin, thank you for bringing me back. Um, uh, to answer your question, uh, how am I? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. I moved to Colorado, did a lot of traveling, um, and just kind of centered myself a little bit. Um, so thank you so much for asking about me. Um, that means a lot. As for did I feel the same way when I was coming out? Absolutely. I think we all, to a certain extent, expect the sky to fall when we first say, I'm gay. Um, and the fact that it doesn't is kind of like a letdown, I guess. You know, we have it so built up in our head that when we come out, it's not a big deal, and our friends are accepting, and the love is still there. We're just like, wait, this is not how I saw this going at all. One, somebody, at least one person would be like, yeah! <laughs> but, you know, best case scenario, they were loving and accepting and didn't make it a big deal. Congratulations, Calvin. Um, it's so great to hear about that. Good luck with your dad. I know that's probably still on your plate um, and, your, and your family, but you know what? Having your best friends uh, behind you and having your back whew, will make that a whole lot easier. So Calvin, thank you so much um, for writing me back and um, thank you for such a great anecdote about coming out. It can be a disappointment how accepting people are. <laughs> it is a strange, strange anomaly that we thought we would pray for, but when we actually get it, whole other ball game. Um, so thanks. Okay, next comes from a homie. Homie is, uh, uh, if you're new to the channel, a homie is what I call people who want to be anonymous. So this was from a homie uh, in week five, episode three, if you want to go catch up on it. I'm worried about losing financial support as I start college in a year and was wondering, if, do you think it's more important to come out or to not tell them until I have a steady job? Would you stop humping me? I was wondering if you think it's more important to come out uh, or to not tell them until I have a steady job and can pay for my education on my own. This is, this is a tough question. This is a tough question. Do you stay in the closet because you know your parents are gonna help out with college? If you think that coming out to your parents is gonna hinder your ability to go to college and get an education, then it might not be the best option. Do what you have to do, but get an education. I wrote homie and homie was nice enough to reply and said, hey Steve, it's actually kind of weird that you messaged me because a few days ago I was thinking about your videos and such. Thank you for thinking of me. That's, well, thank you for thinking of me. I'm glad to say that my relationship with my family has improved a lot since I first emailed you. As of right now, the only people in my family that don't know I'm gay are my dad's side of the family, and I plan on coming out to them relatively soon. I am financially independent now, so there isn't much holding me back anymore. Even though my mom and other family members have a lot to learn, I don't feel uncomfortable expressing myself anymore. When I went to college, things improved rapidly because they realized in order to salvage our relationship, uh, they had to make amends. Also, I pay for my school on my own with minor help, and that is unrelated to my sexuality. I can proudly say I am confident in who I am and don't rely on outside sources for approval anymore. Thank you so much for everything you do. Your videos help me so much in a crucial part of my life. I am sure you have plenty of your own problems to deal with, but it's great that you can help so many people. Um, uh, thank you, homie. Super proud of you. It's not easy to, to pave your own path and to you know, realize that the people that were supposed to support you aren't supporting you and you overcame that. Um, and I think a lot of people watching this are gonna hear your story and be inspired, and I know I am. So um, thank you for writing me back, that means the world, and congratulations for paving your own way. Next came from Tommy from England, and uh, this was from uh, week seven of I Attend Sunday. I'm 21, nearly 22, and I'm still a virgin. Should I be worried? I kind of want to wait for the right guy before I take the plunge, but is this being stupid? Should I just hook up and get it over with? Make sure it's somebody who's going to go at your pace um, and make sure so it's somebody who's going to treat you with the kind of kindness and um, patience that, uh, you know, somebody who is just trying sex for the first time requires and deserves. Uh, I wrote Tommy and Tommy got back to me. Okay, slight fangirl moment over. Hey! <laughs> of course I remember you, haha. <laughs> I am currently engrossed in your awesome poem, Misconceptions of the Fed Minute. 
uh, which I honest, which honestly made me rethink a hell of a lot. So thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. Um, that is so awesome of you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so sorry I didn't email you a thank you reply for the advice, but I didn't think you'd actually see it. So thanks for the advice. I took it all on board. So one of the first things I asked Tommy, of course, was did you lose your virginity? So he said, I did. Surprisingly, uh, I'm still with that guy and I'm so, 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 so grateful. I listened and knew it was something important to me and that I wanted to save it. So I did. Uh, and honestly, he thought it was the most amazing thing I had done. Instead of laughing at me as, as I suspected he would, I think for the first time in my life, I'm actually happy. So really, honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You may not know this now, but you really made a difference for me. And I know there are many others out there who feel the same. Um, and I miss you and your videos. Uh, so we are celebrating our five month anniversary. I can't believe I want to celebrate it. <laughs> and I am worrying happily. Um, thank you so much for messaging and the advice. Oh, and the great poems. Uh, how about you? How goes the TV work? And I hope everything is going great with your other half. Oh, um, I think it's so cool that you stopped worrying about your virginity and let it become something that the person that you picked loved about you. Um, you know, I think we think of our insecurities as something that people are always going to dislike. And in this case, you kind of proved what happens a lot and that's the things that we're so insecure about are the things that people ultimately love us for. Um, uh, so it is so great that you're happy. I am so happy that you are doing well um, and that you uh, are celebrating five months with some guy who, who sounds perfect for you. How goes my TV work? It's cool, man. I'm looking for work out in Colorado um, still. Uh, so if you know anyone, drop me an email. As for my other half, everything with Matt is going great. This is actually our shared bathroom. <laughs> Thank you for your, um, uh, making my day with that email. That was, that was great. That was great.